Welcome back, folks, to some more Rainscape Torment. What else? This is a very long game, by the way. We have many, 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 many more videos to go. So I hope you're enjoying the LP so far. this fellow. It's absolutely nobody. See a ragged man clad in patchwork clothes. He reeks of smoke and trash and his yellowish cast to his skin. He looks askew to you. What do you want from me, Kata? Just to answer some questions. I get fast, Kata. I got mouths to feed. Who are you? Ain't important, Kata. Slip twixt the cracks too long ago. Or maybe that was me da. One way or another, but just another one trying to make a living any way I can. I see. Farewell. All right. That was a waste of time. One minute of LP wasted. Let's try this little... Whatever you want to call these piece of shit homes. One bedroom. I mean, where are these guys shit and piss? Quint! You see a short, fat-faced man who's covered in filth and grime. He smells bad, and his teeth are rotten. He wheezes as he looks up at you and looks down. Uh, I'm Quint, you knew! Who wants to know? Me! Ha! You knew! Yes. He looks at you suspiciously. You sell him, no trade him. Yes. His eyes narrow even further. Dealing, ha! With me, or everybody bark witch! Uh, with... You. Just me, huh? Yes, just you. Let's deal. All right. Weirdo. This guy's got a new eyeball. Plus one armor class versus missile, crushing attacks, and ten, and plus one attack on ten percent to detect traps. Again, more money than I have money for. Uh, but he will buy things. I'm going to go ahead and sell the club. Because no one's using it. Oh, yes, by the way, we got an enchanted battle axe from Bish. I'm going to sell that as well. That'll give us some money. Buy that eyeball now. What the hell is this thing? Oh, Ray's dead. Yeah, big deal. Shamanic rod. Invokes magic missile. It's a severed foot of some large bird. For whatever reason, someone has enchanted it, making it capable of casting magic missile for a limited number of times. I'm going to buy that eyeball, and we should have enough money still to go get the teeth for Morte. Make sure you hang on to your eyeball. Our eyeball does nothing but the angle less eye. At first glance, this glass eye seems a poor replacement for a real one. However, when inserted into empty eye socket facing inwards, its power awakens. Although the eye dulls the wearer to colors and sights, it increases his awareness to angles and shapes, giving the wearer greater accuracy with weapons and giving him a greater chance of dodging incoming missile attacks. Furthermore, mechanical traps stand out to the wearer's vision, making it easier to spot and disarm them. The user becomes more vulnerable to crushing attacks, however. Some of the frailty of the glass eye seem to be transferred to the wearer. Oh, that's poop shit. That'll give us plus one Thacko. We'll take it for now, I guess. It's just cool to have. And 
how I got down armor class one, I couldn't tell you. I just couldn't tell you. It must be I still have some active spell on me. Because I had five. Now I'm confused. be a spell I got. Anyways, we'll take it. Oh yeah, I still have the armor of one on me. That's right. Do. Let's go buy this viper tooth for more Tay. Just trying to get all the cool shit. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's worth buying. Let me check here. Forget. I got some pretty cool teeth already. Plus one, eh. Plus one to Thacko also. Don't really want to lose that. And I'm not using the money cheat, so money is hard to come by. It does make him immune to poison as well, though. Two to seven piercing. Fuck it. We'll buy them. They're cool. Now we can switch between the two. Let's continue onward. Tall iron gates down there. Some collector wheezing over here. How the hell do you get in Odo's house? Ku Yu Yin, let's talk to Ku Yu Yin. I see a drab man with a perfectly moon shaped face. He looks at you without expression and does not speak. He looks as though his voice would be flat as a meadow. Greetings. I was hoping you could answer a few questions for me. What do you wish to know? Tell me of yourself. I once lived in the land of metal machines and doors that opened at a word. I dream of pristine metal cities and the empty shells that are people. I had a number and a name there, and now I have neither. Like all my kind, they are all I have. They are all I have had my whole life. They were stolen from me. Without them, I am nothing. I request your aid. Who has your name and number? The one who used to be Ray She stole them from me. I offered her shelter, her name and a number. She stole them from me. They are mine lawfully and by right. Find her. She's in the village. I'll see what I can do. The bitch is down here somewhere. There she is. Maybe I'll just kill Raideen, rip the numbers off her neck. It's 
The woman has returned to her faraway stare, but her mind has not wandered. You again? Are you redeemed? This man whose name you took wants it back now. Her voice grows shrill. Well, he can't have him. He offered him to me, and I kept him. Never said anything about no loan of him, and he never said he needed him back. He ain't getting him. You can go tell him to fuck off. He really needs a name. You can tell him he can have mine. The name Radine should be good enough for anyone. It wasn't good enough for you. Why should it suffice for him? It's a world of difference between growing up in a name and having someone else's dearie. A new attitude behind an old name can change it all. See what I've done with this one. I'll talk to him about it. Farewell. Oh, great. A back and forth messenger mission. Must run around the trash heap. Have you located the woman? She has my name and number. She will tell you she had won the name for me, but she did not. She stole it. I have it. She doesn't want to give it up. He pales for a moment. She must stay on mine. She stole them from me. I request your assistance. Require assistance. Any assistance you will give me will be remembered with gratitude. Please help. Ah, oh, jeez. I have to hurt this woman. She looks blankly as you as you return and shakes herself out of her daze. As she does, the tattoo around her neck squirms. You again, Kata? I tell you, I won't give you the name and number back. Tell you what. Using this name and numbers increase my fortunes. I'll pay you good money for it, and you can buy yourself a new one. How's that? I don't think that'll cut it. Give me the name and number. How about a nice 20 coins? That should be nice to weed there over to get a new set. Be a day and go ask him if that's what he wants. Just give me the name and number. I'll have to rip them off you. Trust me, you don't want that. She, shrink <laughs> she shrinks under your threat. And here you told me the number protect me from evil men. Take the damn thing then, and have done with it. She tears the withering tattoo from her throat, taking a good bit of skin with it, and hurls at you and flees. I'll let her go. I might have decreased my uh, alignment a little, but oh well. I don't have time to barter with this bitch. The despondent man looks up to you, a glimmer of hope. Has she given you my name and number? Yes, she has. May I have them? Yes, your name, Kiru Yen. Take your number. I thank you for my name and number. Yes, Kiru Yen, yes. But now I realize I no longer require a number here. I'll find myself a new number. I'll give you my old number. I can help you. It is a mantle of law. It is protection. Do you accept it? Let it warm you. Trust in it. It will protect you. Farewell. Farewell. Not usable by chaotic... Uh, special protection from chaotic creatures. Alright, we got a special tattoo there. It protects us from chaos. I know you ain't trying to start nothing with me. That will bust your face. Let's go back and talk to Quint some more. Tell me about yourself again. Quint, selling by. Get it all you want, or you want maybe a job from me. What sort of job? Grease. Eh, Grease the Vulture called him. Left a fortnight ago, a pal, past few peaks. Nobody's seen him or hear him since. Catacombs probably got him. Lots of things and dark places down there. <laughs> Not fortunate that Chris be in the dead book. Good collector. <laughs> Black heart. Got a sharp nose for new crypts. Also got something of mine to find him. Get it back. And get paid, eh? Give you a jink and the deal on junk. It's a deal. He snorts, pairing most happily. It's a poison charm, necklace of hollow teeth. Probably find it where Gris is. Let me know. I will. Farewell. Alright. So we got a quest from Grizz to find his necklace. Memory recalls it's around here somewhere.
know this shit's around here. It's just in a little dinky spot. There it is. Very well hidden. Necklace of hollow teeth. Go ahead and grab that. And there's a chest up here. You can get some bandages and an axe from. Some coins. And we'll go ahead and return this to the rightful owner. By the way, now we've had an alignment change to lawful good. We've done enough lawful and good acts to become lawful good, so that was our goal. We're going to just try to stay there so that we can use the celestial fire weapon. Here is your necklace. And we get 7,500 experience. We pass the object to him and he caresses it, looking it over carefully for nicks and scratches. Done your part. I do mine. He passes you a bag that jingles heavily with coin. We be quits now. You need anything? Talk to quit, eh? Turns away from you, wrapped in his acquisition. Let's trade. It uh, doesn't have anything else we really want. You can have that battle axe. That's not worth shit. And we gotta level up. All right. Time to save and level up. All right. This level we gain plus one intelligence from our specialization bonus. That's because we hit level seven as a mage. Four hit points gained. Spell memorization and abilities have increased. This means we get to put another character point. Thinking about going Constitution again. Still going to gain plenty of intelligence and wisdom throughout the rest of the game. And pretty soon, pretty soon the advanced constitution is going to be very helpful with regenerating. But dex dexterity, getting that high, is good for armor class as well. So maybe we'll start going between the two. I don't know. Let's go ahead and do that for now. I'm going to, trying to work my dexterity and constitution up. I think my wisdom and intelligence I'll be able to buff up through the uh, magical properties and bonuses throughout the rest of the game. You get a little bit of everything, uh, but I'm going to pretty much st stick to the, my mage class. So uh, a mage with good dexterity and constitution is also advised, especially in this game when you regenerate a hit point every second with maximum constitution. Should be able to memorize some more spells here. Two more. Uh, let's go with uh, Chromatic Orb, just to see it. What's this will spell do again? Armor Class 2 against all attacks, plus 1 saving throw. It's pretty nice. I'm not really too fond of Fist of Armor. I like stabbing people with my dagger. Let's go with the summer of the will. Uh, double magic missile, the chromatic orb. We also get a knock spell. I haven't really come across anything locked yet. give us our wizard some strength. I'm going to go ahead and do that since we will be battling some. And we have 
balancing all things. And Zerthamon's focus. This enchantment helps the target remember Zerthamon's teachings. When cast, the recipient's chances for critical attack are raised for five seconds. So go ahead and take that. We actually can memorize a level four spell, but I don't have any. Definitely need to remedy that. Zerthamon should be gaining a level here. Shortly, someday. All right, let's go to Farad's court. I'll not be going in there without any jink. Got jink. Been searching for this guy the whole game, and finally we are in his lair. He's pretty important though, since we have him tattooed on our back. Let's find the fat bastard. There's Ferrati. Looks like a withered old man. Before he was an elderly man, leaning heavily upon a crutch. His left leg is twisted as if he tried to walk two directions at once and paid the price. His maggoty-colored skin is bunched heavily upon his skull and flecked with liver spots. He's mumbling and smacking his lips as his eyes make a circuit of the room. Greetings. Ah! The man's eyes light up and he hears your voice. Tis in my steady corp of gin come to Ferrad's waiting arms again. Greetings, corpse. He smiles a wicked grin. You come to ask for ride for another jaunt to mortuary walls. I've come for information. I've been told you know something about me. Know something about you? The light in Farad's eyes dim. He studies you, mumbling slightly as his eyes flicker up and down your frame. Corpse, no? Yes? His eyes meet yours. Ah, no. What is it? Rod studying you with his dead even gaze. This isn't a mama's fair corpse. No time for games. No time for Varad to play the wheel. What are you asking questions for? I forgot myself. I was told to seek you out. But you would know something of me. Ah. He licks his lips and make a rasping sound like draw, dry parchment on sand. Now who told you such a thing, corpse? Well, no one told me exactly. But these tattoos on my back. They told me to seek you out if I ever forgot myself. Ah, so little said, so much told. Farad falls silent. Suddenly you have a feeling that Farad is dissecting you like a corpse on a mortuary slab. I know much you would know, much yes, much indeed. Farad smiles slowly, the folds of flesh on his face peeling back like a curtain. What do you know of me? Farad licks his lips and settles himself upon a crutch like a vulture. No, no, not free, the questions you ask. His pasty white hands tap the edge of his crutch. Much I can tell you, but telling has a cost. Go on, Farad. Farad taps the flagstones with his crutch and sneers. This village is not at all that lies buried beneath Rad Pick a Square. Yes? Chambers, vaults, corridors, filled with dead, all asleep in their coffins. Somewhere in those halls, somewhere there, lies some misplaced, something mine. What is it? A small thing, a trinket, such a trifle. As Farad speaks, his words start echoing, as if two people were speaking. You know you've heard them before, from your own lips. It's a sphere, made of bronze, ugly. Feels like an egg. Touch and smells rotten custard. He falls deathly silent from a moment and nods. Yes. How much do you hide from me, corpse? He chuckles. Did you return to see if I remembered what it is I want? Do you know what the sphere is? Ah... Farad sighs like shifting sand. And why do you, I suppose, ask to look for a corpse? I do not know where it is. I know it's bad deep, far deeper than any village has ever gone. <laughs> it may be in the catacombs where the water runs deep, deep. Why don't you get one of your collectors to search for it? Very well, I'll do it. But know that I want to know what I'm buying with this trinket. Yeah, a lot of knowing rattling on in my brain box, corpse. He holds up a withered finger. One of them is a bit of wisdom. Everyone wants something, whether they know it or not. 
There's much I know about you, much that you would want to know. Maybe you should tell me what you know, Farad, or I'll pen your name in the dead book with your blood. <laughs> Not sure if threatening him is a good idea. Very well, a deal is struck. A deal is struck and made. He cracks his crutch sharply against the flagstones. It's fearful, a peek inside my brain box. Now, corpse, there's no time to waste. Go to the gate to the south and the east and tell the slumbering fools to open it for you. Make haste, make haste. Hold a moment, I have some questions before I leave. And ask. He smacks his crush on the cobbles as a passing sound. Come, come, Corbs, time is short. So is my patience. When you greeted me, you said something about taking me a jump to the mortuary. What do you mean? Ah, my journal. Farad swings at you, squints at you, and it folds the flesh coming down on the sole of his eyes. The journal you had when we last spoke, has it lost itself? <laughs> These eyes have not seen it. I keep me peeled, I will. I'd love to read such magnificent work. You tell me, corpse. Perhaps the dusties that live there are more to your liking than some sweet bosomed wench. Farad taps his crutch on the floor, then clacking echoing throughout the court. Most forgiving of the dusties to let you stride in and out of that place as you please, considering you don't have the decency to stay in the dead book. I wanted to get in the mortuary, but why? <laughs> corpse, you're so bent to get in there, now you spill and you don't even know why you wanted in in the first place. Sometimes it's a wonder when the planes turn. Never mind, I had other questions. Where did you found the wealth of bodies for Rod? Where did they come from? Does a mage tell the secrets of its craft? So, it is the collectors. Farad frown, frowns studying you. Perhaps I will tell you, but you must make a promise that is for your ears only. Very well. Farad taps the flagstones with his crutch and sneers. This village is not all that lies be, buried beneath Rack Picker Square. Go on. Chambers, vaults, corridors. Farad gives the faintest of smiles, and his eyes gleam like gold. Places black and pitched, filled with weeping stones and precious dead, all asleep in their coffins sleeping. Where do all the dead come from? Farad fixes you with a lopsided stare. Corpse, corpse, everything dies. Life is so short, but death lasts so very, very long. Many people, many deaths. Stairs travel past you. Such a waste for our deaths to be useless in the Dusty's arms, eh? What do you mean? He smiles greedily. Not all the dead that go to the mortuary gate is fed to the furnace corpse. The dusties bury some of the dead in the city's bowels. Under the village, so near, so close, in such a place, I would have been a fool not to see the opportunity. So you rob the catacombs of the dead, the dustman place there, and sell them back to the dustmen, and they bury them again? <laughs> These catacombs are as deep as a dusty's pockets. Very clever, Farad, very clever. Alright. So now we have information that we have been seeking from Farad, and he wants us to get the bronze sphere for him. Now at this point, you can travel back to the hive and uh, turn in Farad to Emmerich and uh, Sharegrave the information that they've been seeking. But we did vow not to say, so you will take a hit on your alignment. I believe if you tell Sharegrave, though, it doesn't affect you. Let's go find out. See you back at Ragpicker Square. Alright, so here we are back at Sharegrave's Kip, which is right there in the uh, southeastern portion of Ragpicker Square. The man nods. Have you done what I asked of you? Found out what he's up to? Yes, for all supply of dead bodies is coming from the catacombs beneath Sigil. He makes a lot of jinx selling corpses the dustmen have already buried. His eyes widen in surprise. He begins to shout, How in Bator did he get down there? The piking bastard! His boat hole is actually a cavern complex that leads to a small city blocked beneath Ragpicker Square. 
And there, there's a gate that leads down into the catacombs. I can't believe the bastard's luck. Now that the secret's out, how much longer can it last? <laughs> Soon the man is laughing merrily. You're right, you are. Here's your gene cutter. Enjoy. All right, we get another level out of that. I'm going to go ahead and level up, and we'll uh, meet back in the next video back at the catacombs. I'm probably also going to go to Emmerich and tell him the truth, but of course, if I take a hit on my lawful goodness, I'm not sure I want to do that. So, we'll find that out, and I will reveal to you the outcome in the next video. Thanks for watching.